Well, the weather's changed somewhat uh, here in the middle of Goodwood, and we are in the middle of the Festival of Speed, where there's a huge piece of apparatus behind us. You might be able to see the red uh, tubes over there behind a divider. Well, that's a little clue as to what we're here. We're here with Siemens, and we're here with a company called Geo Pure. Now, guys, explain to me what you're doing. You are creating power. You're running some of these uh, stands and charging some electric vehicles. The, the vision here is that um, we're trying to have another way of bringing the power that you need to charge electric vehicles. So the, okay. the, the, the idea is that for, for everybody, wherever you go, you can have access to a charging point, you can charge up your car, yeah. uh, plug it in in the normal way, and, and this gives you another way of bringing the power that you need to, to charge those cars to sites where it might be harder to bring in. So for example, at Goodwood, you know, they're yeah, completely off-grid. This is diesel generator territory, isn't it? Uh, probably a lot of the stuff we're looking at is diesel jennies. Mo most of it, yes. Yeah. And, and the other great advantage of, of bringing the, the hydrogen in, so that's our energy vector, that's the way we bring the energy in to put into the cars, and the great advantage of using hydrogen means that it can be carbon free. So we produce the, hy the hydrogen in a carbon free way yeah. from wind power in, 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 our, in our case. So it's, it's wind energy that's locked up as in, in the hydrogen fuel. Um, and then we bring it to the site and we turn it back into electricity again without carbon emissions. And so the, 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 this is like a partnership with the two companies, GeoPura and Siemens. Yeah. And particularly from GeoPura's side, we're an enabler here. We're bringing together organisations. Siemens, obviously, a fantastic partner with their breadth. And Threats from technology and a global breadth as yeah. well. Yeah. So we've got to shift the dial here. Yeah. You know, different people are on the spectrum of where they believe we are relative to climate catastrophe. Yeah. Um, but if you believe some of the latest research, we've got 10 years to decarbonise. Well, then that's, that's not very long at all. It's not long. No. You need big companies doing big things. Yeah. The applications for this are anywhere you have a concentration of electric vehicles yeah. that you need to charge up and it's difficult to get the power by other means then you can bring one of these systems in and do it so we'd thought of uh, car parks or, or businesses where people drive to work park up want to charge their charge their electric vehicle up um, you know it's sort of high street shopping um, places supermarkets that kind of thing but one of the most interesting conversations we had actually was when um, somebody came by with uh, who owns a lot of caravanning sites, camping and caravanning sites, yeah, yeah. and often they have problems because they tend to be at the end of the grid, Absolutely. you know, the grid connection is, 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 is maybe not so strong and difficult to upgrade, um, and people are now driving down there and parking up and wanting to charge up their electric, not just power the caravan, but recharge their car. Um, and the great thing about the caravan site is often they need a lot of heat as well, and the other Thing the fuel cell produces is is quite a lot of heat, the so we could, the byproduct is is heat as well. So they're about 50% efficient. So 50% of the energy in the hydrogen comes out as electricity. The other 50% is heat, which we could use to heat water for the showers and the swimming pool is a fantastic heat sink from our point of view because you could you, know, you could heat like heat the heat the swimming pool up. So it's it's a really it's an application we hadn't thought of that works really well. I think fully charged 2020, fully charged live might need to use some of this technology to charge up people's cars because again lots of people turn up to a show well we'd, we'd be delighted to talk a little more about can, that can Absolutely. you take me on a tour of this whatever it is we, it's like a micro brewery we, we, <laughs> but it's, i think it's better than that <laughs> i don't know if it's better actually <laughs> we absolutely can <laughs> let me let me take you around Okay, so what are we looking at energy-wise? We're looking at um, uh, about six megawatt hours of energy incorporated in that. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, it's hard to do with batteries, but relatively easy to do with the fuel, which is the point here. Yeah. Um, we believe we can do a lot better than this. We have technology that we're using where we can actually shrink this considerably, or another way of looking at it, the same size trailer, would have considerably more energy associated with it. And we have that on demonstration at the moment. And another way of thinking of the, um, so Andrew mentioned six megawatt hours, that's the thermal energy in the fuel. When we run it through the fuel cell, you get about 50% conversion efficiency, as like I mentioned before. Yeah. So this represents around three megawatt hours of electricity that you can produce with the hydrogen here. Um, and just to give you a feel for that, you could drive your average EV roughly 10 to 12,000 miles on the, uh, on, the, on, on, the, on the on the on the energy you've got in here. Yeah, so, so it's a it's a typical EV for a year. I was going to say that's 12,000 average mileage for a year. Yeah. What this really is is stored renewable energy. We all love renewable energy, or well, most of us do, because it's zero emission and it pour, once we've installed stuff, it pours out of the sky or the wind blows and we get it. Yeah. Problem being, if the wind stops blowing and the sun stops shining, it's it's not there anymore and we yeah. need those same same old fossil fuel power stations. Yeah. The problem's always been 
where the reservoir is going to be. We've yeah. built reservoirs for water, yeah. it rains and we know we've got to store it. We've not really done the same infrastructure for renewable energy. Yeah. So that's what this is, that's how I like to think of this as stored renewable energy, which is why it's so exciting to use it in that form for absolutely. what we do. Yeah, absolutely. Quite, quite interestingly, for the person that's investing in renewable energy generation kit, it's also very exciting because at the moment when you generate renewable energy you're generating it very often at the same time as everybody else so the price goes down because there's a lot of it about right. if you're storing then there's the economic model improves because you can use that energy at the time when it has its higher price when there's less of it about when it's needed more this, this system here could run 75 houses simultaneously really yeah 75 houses um, that's um, um, we are running pieces around the festival but we can't find enough to run to actually My gosh. run this thing out it's, so this yeah. is just a token gesture almost as in like oh, we, you we, could wind it right up we'd like to we'd really yeah. like to and maybe another year we'll be able to that would be I think it, it makes perfect sense so let's can we let's chase the journey of this thing we've got a pipe running out of here a gauge. So, so yep. this, this just steps the pressure down a little bit. So this is a non-return valve, yep. a vent valve, a shut-off valve, but a pressure regulator here. This tells us the pressure after the regulator. So that should, it's around 160 bar. Yes, um, that, that was set bars. to. We've got a pressure relief valve that, with a vent. Um, so if there's any issues, then the, the, the system just vents Purpose, safely. Yeah. Another shut-off valve, and then 160 bar is delivered down this. Um, so this is, this is the fuel line. This is the and then yeah. it goes into, into the container okay. um, with the fuel cell that turns the hydrogen back into electricity. Okay, so behind your, this camera are two shipping containers. Ignore these white tubes in the background. You might see a heat shimmer. Those are the diesel generators running a lot of the other kits. So that's your traditional uh, kind of on-site power generation. We all know it. We've all smelt it. You've been to a fun fair. Yeah. This is the new breed. So we are just in a normal shipping container. Exactly, it's a, yeah, it's a standard container that we've fitted out with the, with the fuel cell and the, and the you know, power distribution equipment that we need. Yeah. Uh, our containers are brilliant because they're, uh, you know, they're very robust, they're a very cost-effective way of having a weatherproof building that's easy to move around. Yeah. It's, very, it's very standard. Yeah. So what you can hear are the pumps for the cooling water and the fans for the, for the air. But it's running right now, it's producing electricity as we speak. And interestingly, it's um, the actual process itself that produces the electricity has no moving parts. It's, it's just membranes and cells electrochemical cells in effect yeah. that are having the gases circulated around them. It, the, the bit you can hear is actually, as, as uh, Ian says, it's actually the fans drawing in the air. There's a lot of air going through because yeah. we need a lot of oxygen to create the energy. Basically. It's, it's actually a really small cabinet. It's not that big, is it? It's really yeah. not We could fit big. a lot more in here. You we could do it. a lot more. Yeah. Yeah, actually. So it's very power dense. It's, yeah, it's like 100 kilowatts and a fuel cell is a it's a very neat application. You know, it's, it's, it's the ideal technology to use here because um, they're very efficient yeah. and they're actually more efficient at part load, which is useful to us because if you're, you know, you, you, you plug cars in yeah. and, and plug cars off, so there's going to be, you know, the, the load is very peaky. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. So when you've got, um, you know, it's only running at part load, you actually get slightly better efficiencies, which is unlike an engine. Engines tend to be less efficient at part they load. They do, they do. And also well, the most efficient combustion engine is what kind of? 25%, 27%? Yeah, so open cycle gas turbines sort of push 30%, maybe 25, 30%. Um, Taking about 100 But, years but in, your, in your car, yes, you know, sort of 15, 20 is a good one, really. And, yeah. and you're driving it sensibly, yeah. yeah, yeah this yeah. is 50. And this is 50, 50% 50 efficient. Okay. And, and there's no moving parts, and the only byproducts you get are, are, are water and some heat. And well, the heat is useful, actually, a lot of time, but you just, you just get some water. Wow. So we've got one more thing to show you. Okay. So running in parallel with a fuel cell system yeah. is, a, is a UPS, a battery basically, um, and that gives us the instantaneous power response. So when, when the car's plugged in, you want the power there straight away. So that comes from the battery in the first instance, and then the fuel cell catches up, and actually then produces, it overproduces for a short time because we recharge the battery. So frankly, I think there's been quite a lot of demonstration projects around hydrogen. You know, this isn't the first time anyone's seen that sort of project. Yeah. Normally it's at a smaller scale than this, but still they're demonstrations. Yeah. The, what we're really excited about here, and the reason why company CEOs are taking notice here, 
is because we've been able to show that there is a commercial proposition that works here as well. Yeah. There are commercials that we're able to discuss with people that even though it is a bit more expensive than doing this job in a, a non-renewable way, yeah. it's not that much more expensive and it's such that, yeah, you talk to people and you say, well, I'd pay that. Of course well, I'd pay you, that. You've got, you've got a water filling station over there for, for people like me carrying reusable bottles around. You could, you could be letting people drink the water, like you say, and then heating a building, an enclosure, so it's actually more versatile. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that's really what it's about, motoring forward, if you'll excuse that. Uh, good, um, good yeah. <laughs> I'll um, let you have that. I will let you have that. <laughs> um, with the commercial proposition, real customers, as soon as possible, yeah. get it out there get people to enjoy the benefits. Clean air for everybody is what be, we want. Yeah. And I think it's widely accepted now that electric vehicles are coming. You, know, yeah. you can see that you know, the take up rates are really increasing year on year. Those cars need charging. You want to do it in a carbon free way. Yeah. You know, the, the, the electric vehicle solves the local emissions problem around you know, the emissions from the vehicle itself. Yeah. To complete that decarbonisation of transport, you need to make the power that you put into them carbon free too. Yeah. And this is one way. There are, there are others, obviously, it's part of the solution. True. Um, but this is one way that you can do that. So you'd like to drink some of this water? I'll try it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you yeah. say it's safe, obviously. It's more than safe. It's the purest water you are ever going to drink in your life, probably. We've just manufactured it right now for you from pure hydrogen and oxygen from the air. It's because you know that water that we all drink normally is four and a half billion years old. It's been on Earth for four and a half billion years. Dinosaurs have drunk it. Billion? Four and a half billion years. It's come from asteroids and comets and things billions of years ago. Yeah. Well, I d I, when you put it like that, it does yeah. seem... But this amazing. was made you know, 10 minutes ago. Okay, so this is fresh. This is the freshest water in the galaxy. On that, on that basis, <laughs> I've got to have a drink. Yeah, go on then. Oh, this is romantic. Yeah. Cheers. So, does it taste? Does it taste different? It does, because it's got no minerals no in it minerals at all. It's it. never been through. It's never been in the world. It's never been in the. So you, you would usually describe it as deionized, deionized, but this never had any ions in it in the first place. Do you see what I mean? But it's. So it's, it's actually same. a bit it's weird because really it's got no taste at all. It really because water actually always has a taste normally. I'm getting a bit excited. Yeah, it's funny, isn't Let, it? Let's yeah. try it. Then. It tastes really nice. To it's people. really soft. Yeah, isn't yeah it? it's really very soft. soft. But it's just so weird, isn't it, that the byproduct, the byproduct of that having electricity is s some heat and and water that's the purest you've probably ever drunk. So, are there any disadvantages to hydrogen at this moment in time? So, at the moment, it's more expensive to produce the electricity this way than it is from a diesel gen set. Okay. Um, so, so diesels, you know, it, it, they've been developed and optimised for, for decades yeah. um, and they're made in huge quantities, you have the, you know, the economies of scale. Yeah. Um, so to produce the power this way does cost more right now, yeah. um, but as you scale this up, and it does scale up, um, the, uh, you know, you'll get the economies of scale and we'll develop the technology and you know, we've seen renewable energy prices have come down considerably in recent years, you know, we, re we really have and that's, that's still continuing. Um, so the prices are going to come down for, for producing the power this way. And of course, if you don't have any other option, then this is, this is still what you need, because yeah. the whole end-to-end -end energy supply chain is completely carbon-free. As I said, wind power in our case, yeah. but you could use solar PV, geothermal, hydroelectric, yeah. wave, tidal, you know, any of those, as long as it's renewable energy, yeah. it doesn't matter. Uh, run it through an electrolyzer. When we talk about water as the byproduct, obviously that's where it starts. If you start with water yeah. and split it back into hydrogen and oxygen, brought the hydrogen here through the fuel cell to give you the power, it, it makes the water again um, and generates electricity.